Alrighty guys, so title of the video is, you know, is endurance training bad for men or for males? Well, look, this is a complex thing. And essentially, you know, when we look at any form of exercise, generally it is very healthy. It is very good for us, regardless of whether that's a brisk walk, some vigorous exercise, lifting weights, doing anything, right? Endurance training, particularly excess endurance training in the context of not allowing the body adequate time to recover in the context of putting additional stress on the body in the context of, you know, training many, many hours a week for a particular event. For example, say a Ironman triathlon or at the Tour de France or something along the lines. Is that healthy? You know, I think we all know the answer to that question. That is definitely not a healthy thing to be doing. And why is it bad for the male endocrine system? And the female endocrine system for that matter too. But in, in the context of males, you're going to elevate your cortisol. If you don't have sufficient rest and recovery to bring that down, to recover, to get over the training, you're going to elevate your cortisol. You're going to, you're going to reduce your testosterone. You're going to reduce your thyroid function output. You're going to have other deleterious effects. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing because they're kind of just adaptations to what you're putting your body through. So you're putting your body through something that's very stressful. It has a stress response. But remember that you can have stresses in your life. If you're an athlete, if you're an endurance athlete, excess training is like 100% one of those stresses. If, if, if anything, it could be the most significant physiological stressor for you. And your testosterone levels can go down, your thyroid function, your, your you know, it can become dysregulated or you can become somewhat, you know, subclinically hypothyroid, even if you would have normal thyroid capacity or normal thyroid function capacity. And it's all just adaptive mechanisms. So is it necessarily a bad thing? No, but it can become pathological if you continue this for weeks, months, years on end without giving your body adequate time to recover, without allowing your testosterone levels time to uh, recover back to baseline, your cortisol time to re go back down to baseline. And, you know, they've done studies on, for example, Tour de France riders. And at the end of three weeks or at the end of a grand tour, their bone mineral densities decreased, their sex hormone profile, testosterone, all this kind of stuff's decreased. Their cortisol's either really high or even decreased because the, your hypothalamic pituitary access just becomes kind of, you know, so overwhelmed by the day in, day out stress. Uh, and all this kind of stuff. So it's not necessarily he healthy to be a endurance athlete. In females, we see, you know, loss of menstruation. Um, basically, you will stop ovulating but via the downregulation of estrogen, which is super important in the, uh, in the whole menstrual cycle, etc. And so, you know, why does this occur? Why is it adaptive? Why is it not necessarily pathological initially? Well, because it's an acute stress and does the body want to be reproducing and devote, devoting energy into reproducing when it is uh, under chronic stress? No, it's the last thing it wants to be doing from a survival perspective. Does the body want to be having super high levels of thyroid hormone output whereby we're at a you know basal level burning a whole lot more calories? No, it wants to downregulate the thyroid and I'm talk not talking general exercise, I'm talking like extreme endurance exercise. It wants to downregulate the thyroid so that we can store more energy that we, or we can store more of the energy we put into the bodies. It's just an adaptive mechanism. So just remember guys that um, exercise, endurance, it's good. Uh, this goes for anything, right? Lifting weights, it's good. But if you overdo it, you essentially can put yourself into a pathological state whereby you become hypogonadal subclinically hypothyroid um, and you can do some damage to the body you know you can lose bone mineral density and um, you know create the open the uh, potential for stress fractures uh, with the down regulation of all these hormones and elevated cortisol many mental uh, problems can can arise depression anxiety um, all this kind of stuff so be careful when you're training be careful with your uh, plans for training. One tip I would give anyone would be to get baseline bloods, full blood count, uh, iron studies, uh, full you know hormone profile, uh, etc. 
among other things that we could go through, vitamin D, you know, liver functions, all these kind of thing, all these kind of things, just as a baseline before you undertake any training program. Because what's the point of digging a further hole when you're already starting a training training program in a sub optimal or a compromised uh, state from a metabolic perspective? So this is this is not something that many people talk about a lot, but something that I think is important because you know we have a lot of mental health issues in sports. Um, and we could talk for ages on this stuff, but remember that, uh, excess training is just another excess stress that adds on to everything else in your life. And it's one thing for the professionals to do it. It's another thing for you to do it when you've got a job, when you've got kids, when you've got a partner, when you've got family commitments, financial stress, X, Y, Z, and it's like, now you're adding on hours of training a day. That's impressive, but just remember that, is it healthy? you know, be careful. So just be careful with this stuff. By no means take this as a message not to exercise. Exercise, um, you know, get plenty of exercise, but just be cognizant of the fact that overdoing it can be very detrimental to your health. And we've seen this many times with burnout in athletes, but, um, you know, I think age group athletes, um, amateur athletes are more susceptible because they have a lot more other commitments that take priority, but then they add on extra stress through endurance training, weight training, etc. So hopefully um, there was some useful information there. Take care, guys. Always be careful with this stuff. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.